Yeah, I was just staring at him for like four or five minutes. And he was like, you just going to look or are you going to come over? <laughs> Paul, <laughs> yo. I think maybe we can get Nick and a Tahid pod next. You know at the same I mean? time. I yo. Think that would break the internet. <laughs> we don't want to do that yet. <laughs> Nick, I'm like, serve tea. Uh, big serve slice tea. Remember that missed the return. I'm like. I'm here. <laughs> I'm like, I'm here. I'm like, I'm like, Nick need to hire me, man. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Changeable Podcast. Um, we're in Via Hermosa, Mexico. Sorry for the, um, I guess, the break that we had. It was unintentional. All the matches last week were all in the afternoon um, and night. So we weren't able to record last week in what's probably... The coolest episode, uh, the coolest city that we've played in, um, in terms of the tournaments, but and the yeah. coulda coolest episode. <laughs> Tahid's been asking to come on this epi- uh, on the podcast <laughs> since Tunisia. I've been with Tahid the last what, like six weeks, maybe something like that. It's been like three, four, Something maybe like five that. weeks. Yeah. Dang. Um. But anyway, so before I was rudely interrupted, um, introducing today's <laughs> guests, we have two guests actually, uh, my roommates for the last couple of weeks. Um, Andre Ilagan from Hawaii. Hopefully, I said your name correctly. What's up, guys? Um, I'm I'm filling in for Evan Zhu. I'm his <laughs> long lost brother here, so we're gonna have a fun one here. Yeah, Andre is ranked uh, around 488 right now, um, and it's his first year on the tour. And then the other guest is Tahid Browning. Tahid is ranked around 827. <laughs> Don't let that ranking fool you, though, because this man does not play tennis tournaments, so to be ranked 827 <laughs> and with very little tournaments played. But, um, but yeah, we're in Tabasco, Mexico. Tahid says it's not that hot outside, but it's <laughs> blazing hot. Blazing. So, do you guys like it here? Talk to me. Yeah, I like it. I mean, it's not that hot. <laughs> I mean, from our match. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I think it was just, it's not like... It's not that hot. I mean, when you, when you live in Miami, it's this man says not that hot, right? Guys, so, it, it's it's a hundred like five degrees, and we're in a indoor cover, and it's like humid as yeah, hell. Exactly. It's like it's outside, but it's covered, so it's like kind of inside. But there's no like there's one big fan blowing slowly, but it's like ridiculously hot. I played Tahid yesterday, right? And I lost the first six, what six three. <laughs> We're starting the second, and Tahid is dying at the beginning of the second. <laughs> and you guys know that I haven't really been training singles, but like I'm feeling good right now because I can see Tahid dying. Like I'm struggling too. I go up, a, I go up a break. I see him struggling. I go up a double break, and I'm like, okay, this is it, you know. And then I die. I run out the gas, and I end up losing the second seven five. But this man talking about it's not that hot, and he was struggling yesterday. You know what I mean? I was just a bluff, though. It was a bluff. It was, uh, my it was a yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it was a bluff. I mean, but honestly, though, I think I think the this 15k is honestly pretty good for what it is. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but the past two weeks I've been enjoying it. I mean, I've been playing for about a month in Mexico, and I think the vibes here are just immaculate here. Like the amount of fans that show up to the matches, it feels like you're actually playing a like you actually feel like a professional tennis player. No, last do you guys week think? was last week was by far the best tournament that I ever played. Like. I mean, we stayed at the Airbnb, so maybe not that typical for like what people expect the pro life to be. But it was five of us in an Airbnb sharing room. Well, I didn't share a room, but the rest of you guys share rooms. You know, I'm, you know, me. I was sharing with Evan Zoo. I mean, <laughs> y'all don't know what happened behind closed doors, but it's hey, all love. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, no yes. diddy, no diddy, no diddy. But, <laughs> but um, yeah, the crowd support there was insane. Like, we're, we're actually. Hopefully by tomorrow we can drop a video on our YouTube or uh, our Instagram from our doubles matches. But like Evan and I played three crazy doubles matches like against Mexicans in every single match. So the crowd was going crazy against us. But pretty cool. By the end of the week we had actually people that knew us and cheering for us and so so that was kind of cool. But um, but yeah, let's get into it. So Tahid, so I'll just give you guys a little rundown about how Tahid's year has been, right? So. I arrived to Tunisia, and Tahid was there for maybe about two, three weeks already. So I go to Tahid and I say, yo, so this should be your last week, like maybe two more weeks. He's like, no, no, I'm going like three, four more. And I'm like, Tahid, like, if you play more than three, four weeks in a row in the same place, you may get a little bit burnt out, you know? And Tahid's like, nah, nah, you guys just don't want it. You guys just don't want it. You know? <laughs> I don't want it. I don't want it out here, man. Tahid went maybe three, four more weeks. I went back to Florida for a week. And Tahid flew straight from Florida to Mexico last week. 
Do you regret that decision or you think it was a smart, smarter move? Nah, I regret it because I was me and Jordy was going back and forth like we're not. I'm not gonna have to change tension because I already play at 60 pounds. And then <laughs> I get there the first day. <laughs> I go to what 68 pounds. Yeah, he went up eight pounds. And the day I got there, altitude last week it was in. It was like what 5,000. Almost 5,000, like, like 4,600 meters yeah. or something like that. Exactly. And the so, day I got there, I had to. I played flew doubles. In, I flew in the day that I played doubles, so no practice. Then I played. Play Andre in singles next round. So like, guys, guys, <laughs> let's backtrack here. I mean, this guy was in Tunisia for like seven weeks, and then comes straight to Mexico expecting yeah. <laughs> to do okay. This is what I want to talk about about it though. So it's obviously for both of you guys actually maybe a little bit different paths, but it's your first year on tour. So have you learned anything about scheduling or about like what have you learned so far in your first year on, on tour? I guess we can start with Tahi. Besides scheduling. Um, I think you got the best one. Sorry, bro. Sorry. Definitely don't go from sea level to altitude. Try to switch in the day. <laughs> give yourself some time. Yeah, to give yourself train. some time. Um, also, play where you're comfortable at. You got to be comfortable where you want to play at. Especially, like, for me, I'm pretty picky. Like, I'm a, like a field type person. Like, doing changeovers when I'm playing matches. I got I to gotta stencil the racket for some reason. It's just a field thing for me. <laughs> so, definitely... <laughs> Biggest thing, play where you're comfortable at. Yeah, I feel like for starting like, out, like in futures and maybe challenges, I mean, maybe when you get to the top of the game, you don't have that much options, you know? Like, you have to play these tournaments, but, like, you can be pretty selective with futures and challenges. Yeah, you yeah. can find the surfaces and the conditions that you like, you know? Like, last year I went to Congo, red clay. I'm, you know, listening to other people. Oh, it's going to be weak. Worst decision in my life. Never going back to Congo. I'm sorry. <laughs> the conditions didn't suit you. It just was too much, like, terrible courts. Food was good, but just, like, red clay, not good clay, just just didn't make so sense. So you're saying me. your mind was not right? Mine was not right. Like, definitely not right. <laughs> not what about you, Dre? So you you did pretty well pretty quick, right? You got up to 500 so far in, in a short span of time. Admittedly, I didn't do that much research into these guys. I'm sorry. but uh, And I just met you last week, so... Yeah. The little, from the little I know, I understand that you, from college till now, you've done pretty well in a short sp span of time. So what have you learned since starting on the Pro Tour? Um, for me, I'm lucky to, enough to like uh, have this personal relationship with my coach, with the scheduling as well, saying that, you know, kind of find the balance, maybe play tournaments for four or five weeks just to test out where your mental energy physically as well, how long you can last, but also like maybe playing one or two weeks saying like maybe playing fresh and then taking a week off going from there but yeah i finished um college last may and and started playing professionally in july started off in the socal series that i sorry i missed you you played the first two weeks yeah, i would say I San Diego. and so i played the last three and just tried to just enjoy and have fun to be honest it's like i wasn't expecting anything i was just expecting to get a couple points to start off and then end up winning 115 and finaling another which was kind of crazy and then it's at the end of the socal spring uh series right like mm -hmm. there's like seven in a row just like the last yeah few. last three i did and then after that i went to hong kong in september and i got hurt and uh some crazy tweets were saying i was the biggest uh oscar uh yo i saw that you saw Actually, that right yeah, yeah, yeah. You I saw that? That, yeah. my coach sent it to me i was like whoa like i, I should be, yeah. an, be an actor so, after what this happened? what happened in that so uh, I w we're just playing and uh, it rained delay. I did my warm up and we started playing a few games and I landed just awkwardly and then I sprained my ankle and I was out for a couple, probably a month and a half yeah. and then came back. And better thought that you were just throwing it or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it on Twitter. You saw it or no? No. Nah. They're saying uh, this guy's the biggest actor in the world. Uh, why? Why is he faking an injury? I was like, I mean, I wish I could, but uh, <laughs> be a good actor and I'd be doing something else. But I was just like, whatever. And then after that. First tournament back, end up winning the 15k again, and I was like, it's not so bad. Which one? Uh, I played two week. I played one week in Thailand, and then I played the week after. I finaled the 15 again in in Malaysia. So, okay. I would recommend you guys. Rec That's tough. You guys wouldn't believe the power just went off in the hotel. You just gotta love these Mexico futures. <laughs> Right, you know I'm Yo, let's go. Yo, Dre. Uh, Sorry. So yeah, you're saying your second title, Malaysia. 
No, second title was in Thailand, Thailand and I finaled it the, the week after again. Uh-huh. And then uh, then he popped off at India. Yeah, then played Indian Wells. Um, lost first week to Max McKinnon. Shout out this to him. This is a challenger now. Challenger, this yeah. This, year, no? this is my second challenger starting off. And shout out to him, you know, for humbling me. Um, literally called my coach right after saying I'm not good enough for the challenger tour. And then the week after, I qualied in, beat a couple good guys in, in the qualies, and then first challenger ever made semifinal, which is kind of surprising. And then I uh, played Blaze Bicknell, went up 4-0 double break. And when he held after that, I sat down on the bench, and I was mentally fried and said, oh, I think I'm done. Hey, Jody know about that double the break. Double break <laughs> hey, we, we know that. Come on now. Jody know about that double break. Everybody experienced the 4-0 or 4-1 double break. Yeah, yeah, Thank yeah, you. Yeah. You got it. But It happens sometimes. But yeah, after that, just been trying to find out the best schedule for me right now, just playing whatever tournaments and, and going from there, to be honest. What do you think it is for you? Um, If I were to choose, obviously conditions where it's like kind of like right now where we are in Tabasco, uh, hot as hell, a little bit slower courts. But honestly, anything, I think I think the first year should be like an uh, experience of what and experiments of what you like and what you don't like. So, you know, the next year coming forward, you're like, okay, I need to play these tournaments and, yeah. and go from there, you know? Because, like, first year, you don't really know what you're comfortable with because you're trying to – you're making new friends, making new people. You know? And that and I'm enjoying the North America swing because it's like I know you – I'm starting to know you guys where it's like I, when I was in Asia, it's just tough because, like, the Japanese guys are with the Japanese guys, you know yeah. what I mean? So, and then the language barrier is a lot tougher. So it's like, I'm happy to be here, but yeah, I love the Asia swing as well. It's, it's that's such what a I was going to say with you, Tahid, like if it's, you know, you're just starting out and you know, you went and played these, all these tournaments in a row. Like some guys like that, you know, so you could have said like how we were at the beginning. You said, yo, like I can do all these weeks in a row. I can do eight, nine weeks in a row. Like you could have maybe, you know, cause some guys right. actually like that, but then, Again, like what he's saying, it's a learning experience. So you've done it eight, nine weeks in a row. You went from Africa all the way to Mexico to play a tournament back-to-back weeks. Maybe now you learn, like, okay, I can't do nine in a row. Maybe I can do four in a row, five in a row. Maybe I'm a three in a row. You know what I mean? Like, So I, I believe that it's a learning experience for you, too. You know what I mean? Yeah, I definitely won't do that again. I think more so <laughs> – it was more so because I didn't play tennis since, what, November? And I just came back February, like, from November to February, like, some – personal stuff that happened so yeah. February I just trained and then I was like oh I want to go play so that's why I was like okay maybe was, I'm just gonna go to Tunisia just to see where my level at first two weeks quarter semi me then, so you're feeling good after the first yeah, two weeks feeling good my you level is here <laughs> my level is here you should have went back to Philly <laughs> after that <huh? laughs> yeah, I'm trying to find out where my level at my level is right here <laughs> I said I, I said the level stood there you know <laughs> then then after that I was that's when it started to show like all right you really ain't been you haven't played that much. Yeah. And then, what? Yeah, I flew from Tunisia to Miami, then Miami to Mexico. Now yeah. we're here. Also, you guys, so they played each other um, <laughs> the day after Tahid got in. I got to the match, and it was like maybe 3 2 in the first or 2 1 in the first. And the physio was called. So Andre had a cough, like bad cough. So Andre's coughing. And Tahid, his eyes twitching. So I don't know who called the physio. You know what I mean? It's like they're both dying. But I think you believe it's from lack of sleep. Like his eye was just twitching the whole match. His eye was twitching. Couldn't like. I, couldn't really I mean, see. from the was that forty hours? I probably got like six hours. Of sleep. Yeah, I honestly think it was just lack of sleep. Yeah. I mean, the fact that you're going from plane to plane, plane layover to layover, it's like, dude, it's taxing on the body. You know. The crazy thing is, I was thinking I'm gonna be fine. <laughs> That would be fine. Yeah. I mean, sometimes people do that. Like, I remember last year we were in Monterey, and Justin and I were like the number one and number two alternates for qualities. Mm-hmm. And there were these two doubles guys, Dumbi and Rebu. They're like top 50 in dubs right now. They were in the Canary Islands. So we were like, these guys are playing the finals of Canary Islands tonight. They're not coming to play qualities tomorrow. They won their match, flew from Canary Islands to Monterey, and one of them won, won their first round quality. So Justin and I didn't got, get in. And they showed up in altitude and won around from red clay to hardcore altitude, and it worked. Wow. So like, I mean, who knows? Maybe you just ran into Andre and, um, in tough conditions that like you could have played someone else and maybe got through the round. I mean, again, you. Yeah, I think. I mean, I'm sorry. Like, I'm not trying. I'm, 
If it was anybody else, I probably would have chopped him. <laughs> <laughs> just be real. Like, I'll just, just be real. <laughs> just be real. I'll just be real. Okay. Uh, T, talk to me a little bit about Philly. What was it like growing up in Philly? What's the tennis scene like? Um, Philly. Uh, let me start. Well, actually, my dad played. My dad played college at Hampton, and okay. then my sister played. At first, I didn't like tennis. I thought tennis was dumb. And then my dad just he brought me around it all the time anyway, because he was training my sister. And then I guess I just started to pick it up and just like it. How old were you then? Um, five, but he always says six. I'm sticking to five. Okay. So <laughs> we go back and forth about that. Um, and then we started training like out of a park called Shimoni, like it's in, it's in Philly. And then um, the tra- the place that I used to train at called Legacy. Well, it used to call it Arthur Ashe, but now it's called Legacy. So he also worked there. So I was just training there like every day. And then USTA recognized me with like eight, eight or nine. And then I was doing like the little special ID camps. And then that's how I got to this level, basically. So you ended up from there, you ended up at College Park, no? Didn't you train at College yeah, Park? Yeah, College Park. Bit? Yeah, I went to College Park when I was 12. Man, I wasn't even going to shout out College Park. No, know? shout out College that's Park. That's crazy. Co- shout out College Park. Best uh, <laughs> Coach Ali, Coach Oliver, shout out all of them. Um, oh, that's crazy work now. Sorry. Crazy work. Man, I wasn't even going to shout out I the... I forgot. I've been... <laughs> it's been a long day. I, is your mind right right now? I'm on right. Oh, okay. right. How was College Park? What was College Park? College like? Park was good. So many good players came out of College Park, huh? Yeah, but who, I, who came out of College Park? You joking, Francis. Uh, bro? I I don't know Francis. anything about the Are U.S. You America? I mean, I'm from I'm in, I'm in an isolated island. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna get to you a little bit. But I feel like College Park, like what was it Kula, Francis, Francis, Jordy, AJ, Jordy, AJ, you, Evan. Okay, uh, okay. Haley Baptiste, Robin Montgomery. Wasn't Ty there or no? No, maybe not. Uh, mm. Brian Sherman, not sure those guys. Yeah, there's a lot, a lot yeah, of wow. players. Lots of players came out of college park. I don't know how it's doing now, but I just remember growing up, like, I don't even know where college park is. Maryland? Maryland, yeah. yeah. But it's not how, like, when I was there, it was probably the number one tennis academy in the yeah. world. They had every, all, like, all the good players. Wow. Yeah. But, yeah, um, it was definitely good, but most of the work that was put in, my dad was doing it. Okay. So, hats off to my dad. He got me to this level. But definitely, college park was, you know, a stepping stone for me because it showed my dad like what he needs doing something good yeah because yeah. they hired him as a coach and then i was actually oh so your dad was coaching on yeah. college too oh okay and then actually he was the i want to say the national coach for like for us it was me it was me he took me justin boulet and Saul Agbani to clay court 12 and under okay and then he left College Park like after two years because my sister just graduated high school so he was missing her so we went back oh, to okay. Philly and then after that, I worked with a coach named Christian Hill. He worked with Eubanks, uh, Chris Eubanks. Dude, I met him this past summer. Chris Hill? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, good guy. Good guy. Um, I worked with him from like 16 to 18, so I was he was training me every day. And then that's when I went to Bill Adams. Mr. Adams. Bill yeah, RIP Mr. Adams. The legend. Yeah, Talheed and I trained at the same academy, obviously not at the same time. I went 2010, 2011 yeah. for like a year and a half, but yeah. he was there recently um but yeah r.i.p mr adams i don't know how much of our followers know him but for me he was like growing up in like under 10s 12s 14s like i couldn't wait till go in the summer to play the, the itfs in the caribbean right and mr adams used to be like the coach like yeah, he was known yeah. i mean he was under what's that guy name from australia that he um, always talked about. Hartman. Harry, Harry Hartman. Hartman. Yeah. yeah, he was close he was to Harry, Harry Hartman, yeah. and he liked to run his academy yeah. um, the way Hartman did. So it's like, if you know Mr. Adams, it's like very deep voice, very loud. You can hear him from like way down the hall. You know? <laughs> and he didn't tolerate any shit. So, so yeah, RIP to Mr. Adams passed recently. Um, but yeah, so in, in Philly, the tennis scene was like not that big, huh? Still um, is, really, probably? It was when I was younger. Um, two coaches that kind of had like the tennis center popping at one point uh john glover and justin o'neill they had like all the top players at um at arthur ash when that was called that um, okay i don't know if you know these guys named like jeremy cassabine those guys he plays at vanderbilt but he was number one i think number one nation in 12s yeah okay and so the junior tennis in in philly was good 
Well, it used to be. I don't know about now. Yeah. I'm kind of tapped out, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you too, big time? No, no, no. no that, that's hometown, though. That's, that's hometown. Crazy. No. Hey, that's crazy. He don't give back. Isn't that kind of <laughs> crazy? I give back, but I'm tapped out. I just know when I was there, it was, it was good. I mean, at, at a certain point, you know, I was the youngest. So, like, when I was kind of got older, it was no yeah. I was the best player at Middle State. So, it was nobody for me to train yeah. with. So, what, about, uh, what about Hawaii? I imagine it's wait, awesome. wait, 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 wait. Is this zoom- camera okay? Yes. Bro, what's going on here? Sorry. I wanted to say it earlier, but you guys were getting hella intimate, you know what I mean? <laughs> Reese, Jesus. Sorry, sorry, Reese. What's wrong with the camera? Bear with me. Dre, talk to me about uh, Hawaii. What was it growing up? So. What was it like growing up in Hawaii? It's a lot different. I mean, we're part of the United States, obviously, but we're in a very isolated island, so... We, I was lucky enough, have ha- lucky enough to have a, a good uh, class of tennis players at, during my years. I had my Zuma best friend, Fook. I mean, obviously, Azuma was a little bit younger, but uh, <laughs> I didn't know mu- mu- uh, much about like what you guys mentioned, like all these coaches, all these academies or whatever. I didn't have the money for it, so I was lucky enough to have my dad coach me from five years old to basically until I graduated high school and then. Played for University of Hawaii. Um, my f- I went only I went there because uh, John Nelson, 22 years, he coached this guy named Alexander Waski. Um, apparently, he beat Rafa at like. What did he say? Apparently, that's what he says. I'm pretty sure he did. But uh, <laughs> you capping? I'm not capping. I think. No, I said is he capping? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's his words. It ain't mine. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I went there and. Um, after my first year, I was like, because uh, I planned on playing for two years for Hawaii because I, I wanted to leave home, you know. But okay. um, he became my coach, and I enjoyed it my first year, loved it. Shout out to the guys, you know. And uh, got a couple nicknames, you know. Yeah, uh, tell, tell the, the <laughs> fan base. The, you know his nickname in college? Mm-mm. Tell, tell uh, them so the, basically, uh, it's called CPOS for short. So what that uh, mean? I'll get more into it. So my, <laughs> so my first year, my teammates, you know, like um, thought I, thought I was already. So basically, CPOS means cocky piece of shit, and so I got it before I even went to kind of p- play with my teammates. So I we played like a tournament. I was like senior in high school, my fall semester, and I played two guys uh, that were currently playing for the team. My sorry, Lucas and Fabia. I'd, kind of killed you guys two and one but uh Damn. same score two and one for both matches and uh as the, z clark would say it's a cold <laughs> world out here world. <laughs> <laughs> but uh one match specifically it was like tight first three games and uh deuce point whatever i miss a back uh, a back end and i like flip my racket around so the grips facing towards the two hawaii guys that are watching is like you want to play for me no way yeah and uh, for me at the time, I thought of it as a joke. Like, I'm just trying to be funny. I'm not trying to be cocky or anything. But the more I think about it, it's like, that's a cocky thing to do, you know? Right. And then um, that happened. Then I I went to college. They kind of remember it. So they kind of teased me about it. And then I missed a few running sessions in the morning thinking like, and they were thinking like, oh, this, this freshman thinks he's the shit, you know, just because he beats me two in one. He can do whatever he wants, you know? So that happens. I miss practice. <laughs> And the third, I, I think it was the second time I got in trouble. Um, I don't know if you guys know the assault bike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's the, the worst, worst thing ever. ever. Like, whoever invented that should be. For those of you who don't know, that's the bike with the, it's like one big wheel at the front. And it's a and fan. You have, yeah, it's a fan and you have to like use your arms and legs. It's the worst thing. The, the worst thing. And so I got in trouble for being late again. So the two captains at the time, Blaj and Lucas, was like, okay, you're in trouble. You're going to have to go to the gym and do this assault bike and plate pushes. I was like, okay, I'm in trouble. I understand. And have you done assault bike before? Yes, I hate it. Oh, like, so I've, you know I've yacked on. maybe twice within, like, two weeks that we did. And <laughs> I was like, please, not again. But we end up doing it the rest of the year. So there's a star player at the time. Like, volleyball is very known for our, for our school. And so one of the guys, top now, let's say the star volleyball guy show was there talking to one of my teammates, and I show up and going, in a I would say in a very casual way, casual way, but my teammates would think it was very uh, arrogant. I just show up and be like, okay, what do I do? You know, because I was like yeah. half asleep. Yeah, yeah. But to them, they're like, oh, what do I do? And then the the star player goes, 
who does this guy think he is? Like, and <laughs> I'm a little learn. freshman, you know? Yeah, you're gonna learn today. And then that's how I got cocky piece of shit. Uh, so the rest of the, my f three and a half, four years, the same guys I was with, like, would shout out. Let's go see Paz during the matches and then that would get yeah. me going. And I'm pretty, I would say I'm a little cocky yeah. in a good some, way, if that makes you sense. You got some you know? little Alex Mickelson now. <laughs> The thing is, that I met I met Dre like a week and a half ago. I met him on Facetime first when I was talking to Evan. You were you were with him doing a week in LA. Before yeah, I was traveling came with him. Yeah, and I was like, I I sensed that you'd like to mess around and joke around, like very happy. But like, I also now have seen him play matches, and like I can hear what he's saying in the back of the fence, like you know when he's talking to himself and stuff, and it's like. It's two completely different people. So yeah. you think this like alter ego kind of fuels you? Because we've also had a few conversations off the court and I can tell that your mentality is very like you're a confident person, you know? Yeah. And you it's not like fake, like you believe it. You yeah. I mean, and I, I hear you when you try to instill that confidence in others, like in me or Evan or whoever, you know what I mean? So like how does that alter ego alter ego, I guess, drive you? Is it even an alter ego? Is that just you or I'll, I think a part of it's alter ego but I, I would also say it's like i think just growing up playing junior tennis like a lot of the u.s like other, other states when i would play nationals like my best friend and i would think like they think we suck you know so it's like there's always a part of me like no let me show you what hawaii really is you know what i mean like we every time i would hear like oh you're playing like for example tahit's playing me in juniors like oh you're one of the, his friends would be like oh you're playing the hawaii guy you're gonna kick his ass and i'm like <laughs> Bro, what like come on now like and so then, I mean, off the court, it's completely different. I grew up in Hawaii, so it's very laid back. I mean, you know it from Antica. I think yeah. it's very laid back. You're, as we call it, Hawaii time. Like, we're in no rush. I don't know about Philly because, you know, Philly be hella intense over there. <laughs> 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 but I'm about to visit Philly <laughs> because of you. <laughs> no, but I would say a part of it's like alter ego. It's just, just being able to be... I don't know. I just try to be the chillest guy. Like like you said, goofy as hell off the court. And yeah. I try to implement. I used to try to implement in the tennis court, but obviously it comes off cocky. So I guess okay. I'm taking it that way, yeah. I guess. Well, it's good. The shit's working. So keep that up. Shit. I feel like you don't really cross lines. Do you cross lines? No, not at all. I mean, it depends, really. I mean, <laughs> depends. It, it, if the line. guy starts to get. <laughs> this is the second time that the lights have gone out. So we're gonna hey, what's up, Papi? Sorry. We're going to try and wrap this up before before it <laughs> dies again. So, um, bro, Tahi, you didn't want to go to college? Wait, this is part of the... <laughs> yes. <laughs> we're back, we're back. Wait, you why? want me to ask in a more professional way? Okay, let me ask <laughs> no, in a more professional way. No, because the way he just won it, I'm like, <laughs> who's dying? <laughs> no, no, we're starting back. The, the electricity went out, people. Sorry. Uh, Tahi, here we go. More professional way. What was juniors like as you got better? Did you have any interest in going to play collegiate tennis in the United States of America? Um, for me, no. I'm going to be very honest. Since I was like 12, I was like, I, I want to go pro. But the thing is, I didn't play, play all the big tournaments. But when it was time, I always showed up. Like I did pretty well at Kalamazoo 16 and 18. And I was like, you know, the best. I would say like an unkept secret because I didn't play tournament, so yeah. I'm showing up though. Showing People up. still say that no. Yeah, like so I'm showing up to Kazu Wildcard. Like, all right, who's this black kid playing tennis? Like, they think like he's not gonna make no noise. Play. <laughs> <laughs> if I play, I think 18s. I play like as a wild card. Like I said, had to play like Hugo Hashimoto, Braden Schick, um, a couple other guys, and then I lost to uh, Sebastian Gorsny. But yeah, I was just, for me, I was like a best unkept secret. And then the biggest thing for my dad was he more so cared about the, the tennis player that was 18 and 19, not the player that yeah. was 12 and 13. I remember I kept hearing about you, like, obviously through Mr. Adams, you know, yeah. like, I yeah. didn't keep too much in contact with him, but like, my dad did. So my yeah. dad was always like, oh, you know, Bill has this kid, Bill has this kid. And then we played in the Caselli, you know, and, and before the Caselli, I heard like, you won it like three, four weeks in a row. Like yeah, I want to just run it up. Oh, you the kid then. Yeah, you the yeah. chosen one. This is like a money tournament in Florida on clay. That he would just like, and sometimes it's strong. Like in the preseason, there's a lot of good players. But we played. Yeah, I played like I you, beat like Red Licky. Like you know Red Licky. Mike, for, Mike Red Licky played for Duke in Arkansas. 
Is that brother, uh, Marty's, Marty's brother? brother. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay. Exactly, yeah. But you, like, good players play that. So that's why I played Gertz. Michael Gertz lost four and five. Okay. And then I beat Federico Gomez there. You know who he didn't beat there? Jody McGinley. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know who won the last two times though? <laughs> TV uh, Rotten. That's nice. It don't matter. He still got the dub. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 Um, can you talk to me a little bit about also your relationship with Kyrgios, Nick Kyrgios? Like I saw um, the you at the U.S. Open and that sort of stuff. So what has he been able to teach you? And or, or do you guys even talk tennis and that sort of stuff? Is it nice to have someone like that who is at the top of the game to to influence you at all? Um, yeah. Definitely. That relationship started when I was like 13, I think 13 or 14 or 12, something like that. But I was uh, training at Everett on like scholarship, like as one of the the talent like that he saw. Um, and then I was playing. This is actually how it happened. I was playing was that 12s, 12s or 14s clays. I played Stefan Lucian first. And I lost like three and three. Like this got shot. I'm like <laughs> going back to my room. I see Nick sitting down. Like I just stood there and stood. I stared at him for like four minutes. Hey yo, pause. Yo, like <laughs> no hey, yo. What do you think this podcast is? <laughs> no Diddy. <laughs> no Diddy. Um, yeah, I was just staring at him for like four or five minutes, and he was like, "You just gonna look, or are you gonna come over?" <laughs> Paul, yo. <laughs> and then after that, we just built a relationship. Like that's when Pokemon Go was like big. So oh, we, yeah. we would play like Pokemon Go and all that, and then. Since then, like, since then our relationship grew. He's like a big brother to me now. So yeah, and then I talk to him like I can talk to him about anything, like advice about life, tennis, and then like his his journey, my journey. Like I ask him stuff about that, and he just always told me like, money don't make you the player. Like it's how bad you want it. Like who's when you put the work in, like what are you doing? It's yeah. not like people not always gonna be watching. Like you gotta do it yourself. It's like more purpose than yeah. Money. And, and what what like what is one thing he told you that stuck out to you like that you know keeps you going? Um. Well, one of the big like I guess one of the biggest things because like Nick he won't lie to you like if he he'll tell you if you can't make it like we were hitting that U.S. Open U.S. Open um yeah we were hitting that U.S. Open this one the year that I before think, he got hurt or no this is the year that he made quarters I think okay. when he lost to um, catching off. Okay. And then we were practicing, and then I wasn't like, obviously like, you get amazed by by the crowd and everything. You just glad that you're out there. And we were hitting. He was like, "Bro, you gonna move your feet or what?" <laughs> but me, th- I'm in my head. I'm like, I'm not moving my feet. So I'm like in my head. I'm getting mad at Nick. Like, what do you mean I'm not moving my feet? So I'm thinking he's just being, you know, like a prick or something. But I'm like, he's saying it for a reason because he yeah. he sees something. So we're hitting. I start moving. He was like, "There you go." Like. You're actually moving now. So we sit down, doing a changeover. Then he pointed out, like, Bjorn Fortangelo. He was like, you want to be like Bjorn Fortangelo or you want to be playing at the U.S. Open one day? Like, Bjorn Fortangelo was here hitting with his girlfriend, Madison Keys. And he was like, you have the abilities to make it, but, like, you got to put the least, time in. Yeah, at least move your feet. Like, show that you want to be here or do something. What did I tell you yesterday? Did I tell you this yesterday? Who? You. I said, like, you pissed me off because... You play in like six tournaments a year, so you're still like 800. If you play the full schedule, you're not in the futures. Now I got to deal with you first round, main job. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, right. dog. No, yeah, yeah, I understand. But Nick, people don't really know, like, who he is. Like, he, I, he gets all the slander in the world about this bad guy and all this other stuff. But he only, I think, generally, he only acts like that because he loves the game so much. Like he hates losing. I mean, I, I think, I think he he brings a lot to the tennis world now. I think a lot more players are being more emotional. I would say on court or showing more emotions, just because, like I, I'll be honest, like I, I didn't think he was, you know, I thought he was a dick uh, when I was a little younger. I mean, obviously, he mentioned about mental health issues, you yeah. know, that he had. So I understood that. And then when I got older, I was like. Like we're not we're not freaking Rafael. We're not freaking Roger trying to be so professional. It's like yeah. we can be ourselves. That's why me now I'm like I'll be cussing in the back. I'll be throwing my rackets out of no yeah. not not because like no, I want to do it. Man you know? was like up a set and like break or double break, miss a return, and he's bitching. I was like, back, you know? it's like dog, yeah. what? And I just feel like you know everyone has their own way to deal with stuff. Yeah. Like yeah. Nick might be okay yelling at yelling at me or yelling at his best friend horse like. 
certain ways. That's just how they go about certain stuff. Yeah. And like you can't blame a guy on how they go about certain things. Like I mean, it can't it can't be easy with someone like him where like people probably expect so much for you. They probably expect more for you than you expect for yourself, and then it's a lot of pressure that you don't know how to handle. You know, it's like it's all yeah, brand new. Me, you it's know, hard to, it's hard to judge because it's like okay, you're not in that position to know what he's thinking, what he's feeling, what pressures he has in life. You know, like, exactly. Maybe sometimes you can say okay, maybe this is a over the line or not but you just don't know what he's going through you know what i mean like yeah and i just feel like also probably like you know one of like something like some like david goggins like i listen to him like (laughs) stay hard no i'm saying like no like one real thing he says like once you realize that everyone has something that you know that they're messed up about like yeah you won't care about what how people look at you yeah like sometimes people live in a glass house and throw stones yeah exactly so I feel like Nick is just good at good at that, like just doing him. Like whoever says something, they say it. Like he don't care, yeah. and I just feel like that's why he, you know, breaks the barriers and, yeah. you know, always come to the, find a way. And you to still talk. have that relationship with him now. You can still hit him up and talk about stuff. Yeah, like, I can call him. Can like, tell you Tunisia eight weeks in a row is a bad idea? Can you tell you that one? No, I actually didn't. I didn't tell <laughs> him. <that. laughs> he didn't tell he probably you what to do. People are like, mate, what are you doing, mate? <laughs> what are you doing, mate? So the fact that we have. TB underscore rising on the pod. Are we going to get your boy Nick on the pod? Yeah, you're going to give us the plug or what? He might want that parents fee. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll try. No, I'm, I'm pretty sure like... Yo, YouTube. If you guys want to hear us on the podcast, we're going to need some more subs and some more uh, income so we can afford Kyrgios on the pod one day. No, he's definitely... He, I don't know. It depends on, you know, he's definitely... He might say yes, he might say no, yeah. but he's definitely... He's been a person that i can talk to about my life my tennis like there's been some deep conversation that me i mean and it would be an interesting conversation with him for sure like he has so many experiences mm, i mean the highs of the game beating some of the maybe not some of like beating all of the greatest of all time like in our generation so like yeah and to, to me like i think what people don't realize is how smart he is like in terms of tennis you know people think that he's just very talented and whatever but like you can see that he understands the game better than people think he does. You know what I mean? Like, no, I honestly that's think... That's why he's probably good as a commentator. Like, I don't know about... Like, commentating as in, like, he can probably express what's happening in the match very well. I don't know about how... Yeah, well, or, like, which... W- what that shot actually yeah, means, you know what I mean? exactly. Like, I don't know how much of, like, a present and that sort of stuff he is, but, like, in terms of, like, seeing what's happening in the game and explaining it, he's probably going to be very good. You yeah. Know what I mean? Yeah. Like, Ubax. Ubax is very good too, yeah. at commentating, I think. And that's I, why. Yeah. I think maybe we can get Nick and a Tahid pod next. You know <laughs> at the same mean? time? I yeah. Think that would break the internet. <laughs> we don't want to do that yet. <laughs> We're still early in the still early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he definitely he definitely sees the game well. Yeah. Like some of the stuff that he says to me, I'm like, wow. Like you I, see the game well too. Why don't you tell him about Medvedev, the Medvedev match? Oh Medvedev. <laughs> <laughs> That's my biggest one. He was playing Medvedev, I think I think it was fourth set. I think he was up three one or something, thirty all. And he looked over to the box, you know coaching was allowed that year. But I didn't know he was like because he was yelling at everyone. Yeah. So like As he does. <laughs> so True. I like I didn't know at thirty all he looked over, he said where to serve. So I said wide. He aced Mevedev. I'm like, all right, like I'm <laughs> I'm him, I'm it's him. Flash it. It's flash it. <laughs> I'm so curious when you serve out Mevedev, huh? <laughs> and then <laughs> you, you know what you should say. Let me get one percent of that grand and then that prize yeah, money. Yeah, yeah, and then forty thirty he asked me again, he said where to serve. So mind you, I obviously know tennis. I'm remember that standing twenty feet behind the baseline. Like yeah. it's gonna be hard to cover Nick T like serves. Wide. Yeah. No, no, I told him he's standing Oh, he's standing wide too. Yeah, on the yeah, ad yeah, side. Yeah. Forty thirty. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, remember that if he's looking it's at least cover wide. So Nick, I'm like, serve T. Uh big serve slice T, remember that missed the return. I'm like I'm him. <laughs> I'm like, I'm him. I was like, I was like, Nick need to hire me, man. Hire me. Then I asked him like after the match, I was like, after the match when he won, I was like, why did you ask me? He was like, I honestly didn't know. I was tight. I didn't know where to serve at that moment. Yeah. So I was like, Shh, you had me tight too. Cause what if I would have called the wrong calls and you would have lost the game, you would have exploded on me. Yeah, fine. <laughs> so I was like, all right, that's me. That's all me. At least you went with your gut feeling. Yeah, real. For real. I don't know what to say. <laughs> no, I just, I kind of knew because, like, Medvedev, like, I feel like 
he stands so far back, like serve wide. You, I mean, even though he returns a joke, like at least give yourself a chance. Yeah. He aced him, and then. But he has a good. Curious has a good like cut. So like, so I mean, T is gonna not like, just, come back to the left. Not just cut, but I think greatest serve of all time. If you ask no, me. No, I'm saying it's very accurate and big. But I'm saying his his T serve on the outside is not just like a bump. It's not straight. Oh yeah, come yeah, back yeah, to yeah, the yeah, side yeah, and yeah, come left. Yeah, you know right. I mean? Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. But um, all right. Before this, in this uh, power goes out to us for a third time. What's next for you guys? What do you have coming up? Uh, I I mean, I'm taking a week off after this, going back to Hawaii to get my mind right. You know what I mean? <laughs> got to go see the beach. Got to see some family. And it's always nice. What Oscar say? Got to go see the bird. <laughs> <laughs> got to see the bird. <laughs> <laughs> um, but after that, uh, got to play this prize money tournament. Let's get it going again uh, in California. Then hopefully get in Tyler, Texas for the Charlie. But if not... Is the money tournament for money or is it for matches or like why what reason do you have to play it? it's for like a, a some charity event i think oh, okay, okay. um and then after that maybe play uh the two 25ks in wichita and, and um oh, I'm playing tulsa okay. so I'll, see I'll see you there and maybe one in san diego we'll see but yeah it's gonna be mainly all summer hopefully in the u.s okay and you um nine in a row in egypt no, I'm going to after this tournament. After this tournament, take two weeks off. Go to go to Spain, New Journey. Oh, you're gonna start training in Spain? That's yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. Start training That's in dope. Spain. Play some tournaments in Spain, and then <clears throat> I wanted to play DR, but I gotta go to Spain. Okay. So I can't. What, go. So when you go to Spain, are you gonna let the coaches there determine your schedule? Or like, yeah, that was make. That work? They'll, they'll make, make it for you. Yeah, because. This year, I made my own schedule. But I also think, I, I think if you have a coach that recommends, I think you should also implement what you feel, you know, like yeah. where you want to play kind of, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I'm sure you have input in that. Yeah, yeah, I have input, but yeah. I guess, I mean, the coach that he worked with, Pedro Martinez, some top guy, so I'm pretty sure he knows a little bit more. It's like you trust, you trust his leadership. Yeah, I mean, obviously I haven't been there yet, so yeah. we'll see like once we, you know, how we mesh and everything to see how it goes. But I think it'll be, you know, I feel like it'll be a good culture, you know, in Spain, Red Clay. Yeah. You know, I'm used to playing on hard, like, just to see sure. a different environment. And, uh, nice and then, play. yeah, this year I made my own schedule. Probably <laughs> not a good idea. <laughs> Definitely not. ain't no good I idea. Probably should have took, probably should took that week off, like you said. Yeah. And um, for the tennis, professional tennis player watching this, uh, Hot take from Tahi Browning saying that Monastir Tunisia is the slowest courts he's ever played in. That's not true. Yes. It's just not true. It's just, it's, 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 I've never it's played, so, but. This ask, is slow. This week is slower bro, than Tunisia. Ask Giles Hussey, bro. Giles Hussey. Giles Hussey. If Giles Hussey is saying it, it's, it's correct. No, no, no. Just he's because king, he's, 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 he's the king. He's the king of. Just because he's one about to argue for another row, 10 minutes. He's the king. What I'm saying is, Giles just came from Egypt, where it's very yeah, fast. But so anything's going to be slow. Me and him Giles. had a conversation. You weren't care, there. I don't care if you I said, Giles, is it court slow? Court slow? He said, it's so fast. It is slow, but it's not It's not like the slowest. Like, this is this week is slow. No, it's not. Sure. Bro, I'm telling you, I'm serving like. Certainly like Nick first three game, then it turned to a clay court match. <laughs> like wow. Then you behind I'm out here playing like this. Yo, yo. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's too bad. Sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah, we gotta take that one out. Yeah. But let, let me know guys for the guys that played in Tunisia if you say it's the slowest court or it's you know normal or kind of fast. Um, also it's pretty cool that we actually do have quite a bit of pro pro players that are watching the podcast now. Ask Dan Martin. Dan Martin. <laughs> as Dan Martin Donsky. Ask Donsky. Ask Donsky. Ask Koulibaly. Ask Paolo. They're not, they're not going to say that it's the slowest futures ever. They're not going to say that. Bro, it's the slowest court I ever played on. <laughs> okay. And they're playing with Babylon team balls. Hey, it's his first year on tour, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. All right. I digress. <laughs> but, yo, be, before the, the, the power goes out, I just want to say thanks again. If Wait, can we get, like, two, three more questions, though? <laughs> you want some more questions? Like, three more. You three want three more? more. Like, I want some spicy questions, though. What do you mean? We've been talking for three weeks now about you coming on the pod. You're not giving me any spicy questions. Can we do at least, like, two more? I feel like it was short. It was getting good, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it was getting good. Okay, okay, spicy question. 
much. Yeah, I don't know. How long are we in? How long is the podcast? I have no clue because we we've cut it. But how, how long was this? This one? time is like seventeen minutes. All right, greatest of all time. Who's the greatest of all time? In tennis, Djokovic, Nadal, Fed. You know you finna say Nick Kyrgios. Okay, Sorry. besides Nick Kyrgios, Djokovic, Fed, Nadal. Um, if we're going by numbers, we gotta give it to Djokovic. We're not talking about numbers, though. We're just but asking just, who's your goat. I'm being real, though. Djokovic is the goat. I mean, for me, I think it's Rafa and Roger, just because they. Ex- what? I'm, I'm thinking it. I mean, obviously. I think y'all say. I think guys say Roger because how clean him he makes. No, him I think numbers. If Roger no- and Rafa played the same thing, I mean, played the exact same way, people would not be seeing Roger. Like the grindy, like the let me just say hard right? working. Let me just say that there's two slams on hard, there's one slam on clay, one on grass. If there was two slams on clay, then Rafa would be the goat Rafa right would now. Be the goat. However, how about this one? Djokovic has a leading record against both, and he has the most masters, and he has the most slams. Djokovic is clearly the. But best. then, but then you can also say Roger, when he won like what four U.S. Opens in a row, they made the court slower just because he kept winning. Is that a fact? I don't know if it's a fact. It's a rumor. <laughs> U.S. Open tell you that? <laughs> Shit, I don't I know. That's know. about something else, too. What, what, um, was it one of the clay court ones or something? I heard no, I think it was Wimbledon as well. People are saying it got a lot slower throughout the years as well. That's what I've so heard. So if it but stayed, you're saying if the Wimbledon court stayed fast, then it, it then suits Federal Roger for it, for, for, for sure. Know. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think for me, I think of it as Roger Rafa just because they. What's crazy is you don't have Djokovic in any of those. You have nah, Roger and nah, Rafa as the greatest, but not Djokovic. I mean... That doesn't sound kind of crazy to you? Out your mouth in public? On the internet? Yeah, I mean, I grew up watching Roger Rafa. You know, I didn't think of Djokovic like... Uh, you know what I mean? like. Whatever. I think in the beginning, nobody was paying Djokovic no mind until last 10 years, maybe. Yeah, yeah I got to give it to they him. They started but. cooking everyone. They're like, oh... Yeah. You know, uh, my old coach, Taylor Dent, said that he played Djokovic early on in his career. And I don't remember if it was at a challenge or early at the ATP or something. And he thought that he wasn't good. And then a year later, he was like, that's the most improvement he's ever seen from any player on the pro tour. And then, like, a year or two later is when he started just destroying everyone. You know what I mean? <laughs> can we talk about... <laughs> wait, wait. Can we talk about... That's my, that might be too spicy. What? Players we don't like on tour? No. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to talk about that. We will not talk about All right, that. let's say, let's ask a question like top American players, like who you think popping off right now? Okay, yeah, what do you think the, the American game is going right now? We got Tahi Brownie on the come up right now. <laughs> Evan Zhu coming back, resurrecting from the back to 270. We're going to be back up to 270. We got Jody McGinley, Ali, and Antica. Oh, okay. I, s- I said from oh, Antica, yeah. about to be top 150 soon in doubles. <laughs> you going to deaf him up? I just said American. From Antica. I, I said but we got Jody to, from Antica coming. Let's see, top Americans like, are we going what age? Let's do an age range. You mean you mean like early? Okay, like you mean like college pro that kind of stuff, or you mean like top top top? Like Ben Shelton age and below. Yeah, we're not talking about Tommy Paul and Fritz and that. Saying I'm Maybe old. I guess my age is uh, old. Now. This not in order for me. Okay. Uh. Andre Shelton. Andre Elegant number two. Sorry, <laughs> just kidding. Vince Shelton. Uh-huh. Um, Mickelson. Yeah. What a- other Americans are doing that good besides those? Two? Uh, Aiden Mayo. But that's a considerable jump. Those two guys are top hundred. No offense to Mayo, great player, but like he's like two something. Yeah, but right? he's still he's he popped. He's been popping off. He did. He um, did pop off last year. Ethan Quinn. I rate Ethan Quinn actually. I rate him a lot. I think he'll be good. Ethan Quinn. Um, what's that? That was three or four. Like three. No, Who you else? said you said Ben Sheldon, Mickelson, Ethan Quinn, Ada Mayo. What's four? Give me that one mo. I think what's his name? Okay, how about this? How about this? One dark horse to pop off at US Open this year. Under I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> An American. That's My long lost brother. Me. Me. Oh, um, that's easy. Long lost brother Evan Zhu, baby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'd probably say 
Well, he already he's not a dark horse at this point. Mickelson, he already. Mickelson, talked. you think he's gonna do well at U.S. Open this year? He already know he's gonna do well, just the way he act. Mickelson <laughs> <laughs> already know he's gonna do well. Uh, that's crazy. I mean, okay, okay. How about this? How about this? If you had to pick one American at the top of the game, any of the Americans, who will first win a slam? Of the Americans, so you got Corda, Tommy. So it could Francis, be anybody now. Fritz. Honestly, the, I think one Shelton. game. Oh wait, and we forgot to throw what's name in there. Who? Um, Emilio Nava. He. Yeah, Nava. Emilio just... Nava. I, I think if it was one person that I, I would choose that I think could win a slam, I yeah. think it'd be Tommy Paul. To be honest with you. Over Fritz. Over Fritz, yeah. Wait, wait. Why wait. Are you shaking your head? No. Because we got. First of all, <laughs> we got Ben Show and the Francis. True. <laughs> What are y'all talking about? So he's but not I'm but top three. <laughs> so you, okay, okay. No, what's your got pick? Ben Who do you think will win a slam first out of all the Americans? Um, Tahi Brownie. Ben Shelton or Francis? I think it's Ben Shelton or Tommy Paul. I think I would agree with you. Ben Shelton or Tommy, yeah. Why y'all counting out Francis though? Francis. Don't forget, Fran- true. Francis made semis of don't, Australia. Don't forget, I mean, that's true. Yeah, don't yeah, yeah. count out like Francis did beat Rafa at quarterfinals of U.S. Open. Yeah, but then you, I mean, Tommy Paul made semifinal of Australian Open, you know what I mean? Like literally last year. Okay, I might change my answer from Shelton to either Tommy or Francis. Good argument. But what about Ben now? You don't like Just ben? because, yeah, no, I do. Joke. Joke serve. But you got to think, though. He hasn't, he hasn't done it yet, you know? All right, but. If we're going to be honest, the age different. Ben Shelton, 21, already semi US Open. He's 21? Yeah. Wow. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Like, you got to throw that factor in. And, like, Francis and those guys past 25, I think. Yeah. So, Shelton going to be there for a while. He already made But we can argue that those guys have more experience now, so now they have a better chance. Like, you can just... Who has more experience? Francis and Tommy. You can just... I can argue the complete opposite to what you're arguing, and it could make sense. But how, though? Because you're saying that he's 21, Shelton's 21 and has time. I'm saying that Tommy and But Francis, the time, I don't think... The time is not, is not gone. But I'm saying, I don't think... It's those, not like they're 35. They're but like, I don't think those guys going to be peaking still like Djokovic when he's 30, bro. Yeah. Djokovic about to be done in the next few years, brody. But I'm saying... He told you that? I don't think... Yeah, he personally told me that. <laughs> I don't think mo- most of these guys, I mean, obviously I would like to see it, but I don't think they're going to be peaking like... Like Rafa or like, I don't think nobody's gonna be like Djokovic. No, I think I think they'll. I don't think there'll ever be a, a big three like that ever again. Bro, or maybe in the next first universe. First of all, if these Americans want to win a slam, right now they gotta deal with Yannick Sinner. Playing, t- playing well right now is Sinner, Alcaraz, Zverev, and then you have the other guys like Rude, Rune, City Pass. So I got, I got, I got, I got, I got a good question for you guys. It, it who's gonna be? Anyone on tour is gonna break out this year, like making, like, say, the challenger level. I don't know. Challenger level? Yeah. Uh, me? Should I say me? Dog. Nah, my dog. <laughs> I mean, I'm only saying that I haven't, like, last year I played four, like, four tournaments. Yeah, you, know? you need to play some more tournaments. You need to play some more like, tournaments. I had to, I mean, it don't really mean nothing, but I know the levels. But there. let me three guys you think you'll break out. Break out? Yeah, like, just have a good year in general. Like, in college right now, too? It or could be in college, too. So one of them is you. So that's Tahir no, Brown. Oh mean, shit, my bad. We're not gonna put myself in there. Jody McGinley. Uh, sorry. Justin Roberts and Evan Jupe. Sorry. Nishesh. Nishesh, you played at Stanford. Okay. Um, I don't know. I'm gonna say it. I think Andre. <laughs> when I play Andre, I'm like this guy's a, <laughs> he's too good. No, when I play Andre, I'm like this guy's a joke. Yeah, this guy's actually joke. I, I appreciate <laughs> that. <guy's> actually, yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm a little nervous. Just like the ball, just just the simple fact, just like the ball striking abilities. Like I was, I was like, I was kind of confused on what was going on sometimes. Um, <laughs> well, you had the bat strung up like a different. Yeah, tension. you had sixty eight tension, the, bro. No, but I was just impressed how like, like even just watching him, I'm like impressed how he redirects. People, I'm sorry. We've just been dealing with this power outage. We're back again. Um, so. Before we wrap it up, just quick question. I just wanted to know from you guys when, at what point in your career did you know that you wanted to play professional tennis? And yeah, what gave you the confidence to actually believe in that dream and go for that dream? I guess you could start, Dre. 
Um, I mean, I always, yeah, growing up, I wanted to be, always be a professional tennis player, but um, I think it happened, I think, when 2020, 2021 year started, we played only conference matches, and I played a guy that was, at the time, but there was no ranking. Like, he was 17 in the country, named Joseph Guillon. He is a French guy from UC Santa Barbara, and I was up 6-3, 5-4, serving four, then end up losing 6-1 in the third, but I was just like okay i think i can actually play and then um my my coach shout out to my um university coach uh coach well uh believing in me always and uh part of him i would say was all him because he is like you can beat these guys you're just a diamond in the rough as he would always say and um then i played all americans got into the qualities and then ended up making the semifinals. i was like i can i can actually play sheesh <laughs> and then a couple of weeks after, played Arthur Ferry, where he played that summer, almost made main draw Wimbledon, lost in five sets, and I, I went three sets with him. I was like, yeah. all right, I'm going to take this a little bit more serious. And the game was in a good place. Yeah, and um, and it was different because like that, during that time, I was like playing like Rafa Nadal, playing Wahe, Wahe, you know, to the back end all day. And now, um, as Tahid mentioned, like, I take the ball early and, and yeah. redirect and just try you to hit everything do flat. Very interesting that I don't really see that often. Like, if the ball is short a lot of the time, you're gonna like go like strong cross whatever. But then, let's say someone goes deep cross to you, you redirect line. Very yeah. Well. So it's like people won't expect you to change direction off a ball that's like really deep, and you do it, you do it well. Like you almost hit the forehand like kind of late, and then it goes. Yeah, like, it, and well. for I I can tell for myself like it feel it looks. When you guys watch it, like looks a little bit too casual, you know. It's like, right. yeah, yeah, exactly. but I'm just letting the racket That's what play. I'm saying. It looks like, late. It looks like you just kind of wait and you, instead of swinging and making contact here, you half volume it, making the contact like to the side and then just redirect it. Line yeah, I it. do some, I do some weird stuff, but yeah, after that, I was just like, I made 11 in the country before the se uh, spring season started, and then I shit the bed and and didn't know how to deal with the pressure. So that's why I went back for my fifth year. Okay. But at least you had the idea that they had good tennis in you. And you can yeah, yeah. I mean, dream. I didn't really see it before. It was like such a a far dream that I had. But then my coach always reminded me, I think, like, you can play. It's just yeah. you don't know it yet, you know. Yeah. What about you, T? Um, I think for me, I think, I, like, since I was young, like, I was instilled just, like, because my coach that I had, like, when I was young, he had, like, he did some stuff with USTA, so like he was real in tune with like the the footwork and all and everything, like technique and everything. But I think for me, I knew like I could play professional tennis, probably like maybe seventeen, eighteen. I just you know had to get obviously the results and get to the dance. And then I think last year, last year when I played Trinidad, I came through qualities and lost to Zeke. In the quarters, and I came to college again. Second week, asked for a wild card, they didn't give me a wild card. Yeah. <laughs> nice lost try. To, lost to Zeke in the semis. So I was like, okay, like first, first ever pro tournaments, quarters and semis came to college. I'm like, okay, like I lost to Zeke twice. So I'm I'm fine with that. And then after that, I played San Domingo. Then I beat like some decorated college players, Justin Boulay, second round, and then I beat Liam Drax in the final. He was. Who was he number one? College? He was former number one yeah, in college. Yeah. I was like, all right, just beat Liam Drax. Like, that's tell you you could play. Yeah. And then after that, but you knew you could play before that. So I know, I but it's just about like doing it. Yeah, it but it's is. like you still you can have that mentality, but it's like if there's no no results, what is it? Yeah. And that's it why he skipped sound, college. Kind of sound playing. like a dream at that. <laughs> kind of sound like a dream at that point because you're just saying like, oh, you could play, but like, you gotta have the results to show. Yeah. Then second week I lost to Martin Dam in the twenty five four and three. Um, tough match, huh? Yeah. Very tough match. <laughs> right. So I was like, okay, like, I'm compete with Martin Dam. You know, Martin Dam been out here for a couple years, and then I went from no ranking to like eight hundred. I was like, okay, like I can do this. Yeah. Then after that, I kind of like went back, <laughs> went back, to, went back to hibernation. Then then play a tournament and. So I went to Congo. That's when the schedule maybe like I got ahead ahead of myself. Like don't yeah. don't go to places just because you might other people might say go there or you might think it's easy. Yeah. Like you gotta feel comfortable. Then after that, that's when I was like, okay, like I can actually 
to make this, you know, something like make out of something. Yeah. Hopefully this Spain journey helps. Yeah. yeah. We'll see. Definitely. But yeah, playable. fellas, thank you for coming on. Uh, I'm sorry about the not this in my control, but sorry about the electricity going out a few times. Hopefully <laughs> Hopefully, Reese does a good job editing this. You got um, any shout outs? Yeah, yeah, any shout outs? You guys want to thank you anybody? Shout out to Bert. Anyone watching? <laughs> nope. Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, shout out my coach, to be honest. I mean, he's making me be stable throughout these weeks, so got to shout him out specifically. I love him. Sorry. What about you? Uh, shout out my dad, my mom, my uncle Louis Bolin. Uh, yeah, f- shout out everyone who's also helped me along the, the journeys. Definitely a grind, so shout out my sisters too. Oh, let me let me take mine back. I mean, shout out to the whole island of Hawaii, baby. <laughs> um, just supporting me. Um, nah, it's real love out there, you know. Love these boys out here, you know what I mean? Shout out to the my dad. to the boy Tahi from Philly and then shout out to the pod, you know <laughs> what I mean? Cool, cool. Shout out to the pod, you know. They're you know, give them a follow, you know. I think they're they're doing great. I think uh we're we're the diamond in the rough again, you know. We back yeah, at it being cool. diamond in the rough, I think. We can get it going. Shout out. Come on, Hawaii. We can do something about it. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> sorry to everyone um, that's already been subbed for not having a video, not releasing that many videos recently. It's, it's very challenging on the road, um, especially when, which is, it's actually cool that we play these tournaments that they have like, like night matches and stuff. So they have big crowds. So I'm sure on our Instagram, you guys have seen some of the videos of the crowds. Hopefully we'll get some more out to you guys. But like, when that happens, it's really hard to record. So, um, yeah, we're glad we can make this happen. Hopefully, the the electricity doesn't mess up the quality of the video. Hopefully, you guys still enjoyed it. Um, if you haven't, remember we have code with uh, Pro Stringer. You can get the Pro Stringer hundred dollars off when you use our code, the changeover. And also, if you're interested in college tennis, we have recruited. Um, yeah, you can use our code changeover there to sign up for recruited and help you with your college recruiting process. And we have merch on sale. I don't have any of the clothes on now. Sorry, but we still have merch on sale, so feel free. Link in the description. Um, hopefully, you guys enjoyed the episode, fellas. Thanks for coming. See Thank you, you for having me. Shout out, just, shout out Justin Roberts, too. It's my dog right there. Good guy. I hope to be back. <laughs> <laughs>